welcome to 2023. Thanks for your cards and your letters etc over the holidays. I will reply to them but in a different video because today Perry sent me, well not today but he sent me last before Christmas, a gearbox. This one here. It's uh, a Series 3 gearbox. Now we haven't done one of these before but there's something unusual about it because you can probably observe from here there's no uh, cover nor is there any gear in here. Now, I don't know what's going on there. Um, it is a Series 3 gearbox because if you look here you can see this is where the clutch goes on. The Series 2 A's were quite different. There's a few bits and pieces missing off it I must admit. Um, we haven't got the shift lever we haven't got the pin for the high and low, which is going to be awkward because I haven't got any. Uh, the cover's missing here for the shifters, and I haven't got a gear stick, I haven't got any of those parts. Um, there's something dodgy going on with these bolts here. The hole looks far too large for the uh, bolt holes. We'll inspect that later. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, suffix A was one of the very first ones. Now it must have been off a North American spec because this has got the reverse light in. Uh, this must be early 70s. Uh, what else is there unusual about it? Well, I don't know if you can see down here. Down here there's a line of silicone. So this transfer box has been off before. Also you can see a line of silicone down here. Well, if you can turn that around, look, you see. And it's very hard silicone, so I don't know what that's come out of. Bolts are missing out of here. Some bolts, well, studs are missing out of there. Bolts are missing out of the engine mount, uh, the uh, gearbox mount. Also, I've noticed here uh, there's a crack. Let's pull this this way. This is cracked. Now I can't do really much with that at the moment. Maybe I could. Maybe I couldn't. I don't know. So it depends how much money he wants to put into it. But let's get set up and take this apart. Now, like I say, I am using two cameras again. It's just this is an experiment, but uh, the second camera seems to eat batteries like nobody's business. So I'm, I might have to just switch to this one rather than this one. All right, so we're just learning. It's early days. Oh, yeah, the silicone all over the uh, cover. What we're going to do, first of all, is get this transfer case off. That means taking the handbrake off first to get to the bolts off here. Uh, and take the cover off the bottom so that we can spin it over and get these bolts out of the transfer case because they put three bolts here but there's also I think there's three bolts in the inside as well and you can't quite get to them because it's hidden by the intermediate gear in there so let's get some tools to get this gear, uh, transfer uh, handbrake off we're just simply going to take out the split pin First of all, I'm going to destroy it to get it out, but uh, it doesn't really matter, they're cheap, even I can afford them. Um, is it going to come out? There we go. So there we go. Now, all my Whitworth spanners and things like this, or, or sockets, they're all half inch drive. So I've got myself a little adapter, half inch to three eighths. No, I haven't. I've got it the wrong way around. Wait a minute, I'll have to go and get another one. <laughs> so that we can spin off these nuts here. Like I say, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. Mm -hmm. Let's take this camera down here so we can see what we're doing a bit better. Right, is that going to come off? Yes, indeed. Oh, two washers. That's unusual. Yeah, two washers. I'll buy that one. The, uh, the brake shoes, as you can see here, uh, have got the obligatory blatherhood of oil. It's all soaked in oil. I'm not too worried about that, though. I've got a seal on there, I wonder if we can get it off now. Get rid of that. 
And then we're just going to take that handbrake off as a complete unit. Come off. There we go. Right, what size is that? I'm getting good at that this morning. Oh, not that one. Here. It's stuck in there. I inadvertently left a, a bowl of muriatic acid open. What a mistake that was. Everything's got a film of rust on my bench, tools, anything that was in its vicinity. Don't use that. I was trying to experiment, uh, oh, it didn't really work very well. Right, we're going to keep all these bolts in the handbrake drum, in the washers. There was not many lock washers on these vehicles. All they seemed to do was use um, like spring washers. And there's another one gone missing. Where's it gone? Let's take that to the edge. There we go. Right, that's that off. Right, now we need to take this cover off. We need to take this cover off at the top here. This one. And I think that's a small one as well. So, what size is that one? Oh, dear me. You'll see why, because we need to get access to a locking nut. Oops, that's it's come up now. We need to get access to a locking nut that's in here. Now, I haven't got a tool for doing this because, well, I think I had one once upon a time, but I've never used it. Now I need it, I've got one. So, what we're going to do. What's that? Um, I'm going to get JP to make one. I had a look at one of the, the prices of them in, in the UK. It was £79 to get the, the, uh, the tool to get this socket, this nut off. It's a bit excessive. Yeah, silic ooh, silicone and gasket. Oh, there's belt and braces for you. Uh, because we don't know this one too much, we're just going to put the nuts back onto the studs. And we shall sort that out later. This is a very, very unusual setup. Um, I might just have to take the camera off to show you. Um, yeah, just let me take this camera off. And you can see what can you see what I can see? Uh, we have here. There's no gear on it, but you can see that bearing. I hope you can. Just like, I bet the light's gone off now. But you can see that bearing there is, is just split in half. And this is on a very fine spline. That's what I was talking about to take that uh, that nut off there. I'm just going to use a chisel for now and then we might have to get a new nut or we might be able to salvage it, I don't know. Let me put this back on the, the stand. This light keeps going on and off. I would have thought the light would have come on over there. So that's that. So now I'm just going to see if we can tap this off. Oh no, it should have a, it should have a lock washer on it. <laughs> nope. There's no lock washer in it. Is it coming out? Ooh, that's tight. Oh. But the dismantling tool has overcome that problem. So this is the knot we're talking about. You need a special spanner usually to get that off, and what usually what people usually do is just flog them up with a, a chisel, which isn't really acceptable. But no, this is really a, a mystery. I don't know why it's got that internal piece in there. This might be a bit of a problem. It seems as if the uh, the bearing stuck. I tell you what, we'll do. We'll spin it around. 
and get the sump off. Oh, look, somebody's put uh, UNC bolts in there. That's handy, isn't it? What size are they? The quarter UNC. Which should be the same size as a quarter Whitworth. Yep. So why have they it like this, I wonder? Quarter UNC and quarter Whitworth have a very similar size head and a very similar sized uh, pitch. Always have a magnet handy. Now, what are we going to find in here? Who knows the secret of the black magic box? Obviously they didn't want it to leak. Right. Well. Perhaps you can... Let me do a zoom with this. Yes. Perhaps you can see the dilemma of this gearbox here. There it is, look. There's the gear. There's the bearing on the race. Um, now that should be a spline shaft, but I don't understand this. Uh, I can't understand that why it's like that. The rest of the gears look pretty good. But what we've got to do and this is the problem with this is we've got to get this gear out in order to get the bolts out from behind now unlike a series gearbox the pin has to go this way oh, I should have said defender gearbox by taking that out I don't think we can get the pin out this way Mind you, we've got nothing to lose now, have we? But we're still not going to be able to get the gearbox off without that. Um, which way does that pin go? Well, let's take it off and let's have a go, eh? We've got nothing to lose. What's this? What size is that? Um, I need sort of a crow foot pry bar yeah. or any old pry bar really. I don't think it comes out. I'm sure it doesn't. I say it's a long time since I've done one of these. Ooh, it will come out. Well, there you go. So we'll take that out. And we'll, we'll make sure that the the washers come out. Oh, that's going to make life a lot easier. Um, I'm going to get the washers out somehow. We've got a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. There's one. Yeah, that but that's been recently done because it's got grease on it. So. Somebody been playing around with this. Yeah, the gears look remarkably good. And here's the second one here, so we'll just take those thrust washers out. And we'll thrust it over there. Now we can get to our three bolts here holding this case on. Oh yeah, that, that's gonna work out quite nice actually. So let's Take off these bolts off the outside first, and we're going to use some uh, regular spanners. That's off there, that's off there. One, two, two, and then the inside ones here. These are a bit tricky to film, but I can turn this around a bit. You can probably see them here, here, and here. Right, you can just to say the same. So I'll take those off and we'll probably come back. Oh, they didn't want them falling. 
Yeah, these are locking nuts because they don't want them falling off in the gearbox. And I'll show you they're a very oh they've got they've got spring washers and locking nuts on these. These nuts are kind of unusual because they're uh, you can see there's a ring on the top here. But what they did the undercut a thread, they, they undercut it both sides 180 degrees and left a little bit of metal in the middle and then just banged them over and that became a locking nut. Very very simple.